Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Scope. It's the only show that can get that spot out of the carpet. I'm your announcer, Tony Partington. Coming up on this edition of The Scope... Show number two of The Cycle, we, we look back at a historic summer for the Scope. Plus, coming soon, hit it or miss it, and your comments. And now, here are your hosts, Jared, Adam, and Shane. Ahoy hoy, Scope Nation. And historic episode, Jared. Yeah, I, could, I totally boffed my intro that I wrote. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about your, your sort of mellow fellow <laughs> intro. I had, we looked back at an historic summer movie season for the Scope. I'm like, I just blanked. You were gone. <laughs> I have it here on the screen and I couldn't read my own he writing. not read his own writing, not Adam. not my own writing. Adam, why are you hypnotized by the cameras? I got some feedback from last week that I didn't make <laughs> enough eye contact. So. You're making too much wow. eye contact. <laughs> Look at you. That's, that's a <laughs> He's <quick>. very happy <laughs> with himself. <laughs> that's a quick feedback. Very quick. Yeah. Who is that feedback from, by the way? My mom. mom. She's very critical of me. Yes, she should be. Yeah. Hey, guys, you know, last week... Uh, or this is the uh, this is the week that I'm at my brother's wedding. My brother that exists. Yeah, that we just secret brother. About. That's right. Secret, secret brother, brother wedding. Hmm. Let us know how that goes. Well, it's happening right now. Okay. I can't wait for the next episode. <laughs> so, guys, I have. Uh, I want to do a quick uh, look back at something that I proposed to you two fellows. Yes. I think I did this either late 2012 or early 2013. Oh my god! You proposed. <laughs> Go ahead. It is our, our... You guys remember when we had that little segment? It was the Scope New Year's Resolution. Uh-oh. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it? So I proposed to both of you that we, over the course of the year 2013, mm -hmm. we go back mm -hmm. and we revisit... Oh, I did this already. Uh, oh, you've done it? I, well, I'm, I'm four episodes in. Okay. So I don't remember what I asked you guys, but for the listeners that don't remember, didn't, didn't tune in, I asked both Jared and Adam and myself an internal monologue, uh, to look back, go back and, over the course of the year, watch a television program, a full season of it, or the entire program, depending on how it was uh, was released. Uh -huh. And I guess at the, end of the, at the end of the day, we would just give it a scope score or, or, to, or talk about how this show lived up to the expectations that you maybe had set when you had previously seen it. Yes. So I picked, uh, for my television program, I picked the cartoon series Robotech. Okay. Which was 85 episode, half hour episodes of a cartoon, which I have no idea how I'm going to get to all those. I did start that. You're planning to watch the whole thing? The whole series. Do you, did I pick something? Uh, yes, you did pick what something. Did pick? <laughs> what did you pick, Adam? Was it Breaking you. Bad? Because I have... I'm, it wasn't I, Breaking Bad. Dang it. I, I think it was an, I think it was an older I'm re, show. I'm rewatching the whole show while the final eight airs. I, so. I think it was something from your past that you chose. Maybe it was Jason the Wheeled Warriors. Was it? I thought the rule was it had to be something not from the last five or ten. Yeah, years. I think yeah, it yeah. was, yeah. So what did you pick? No, I picked Breaking Bad, season one. I give it four <laughs> scope stars. Wow. <laughs> what did you pick? Uh, I picked Quantum Leap season one. I did not want to watch the whole thing. Did they do... How many episodes did they do of season one? Just a standard 20 or something? 20, 21, maybe. And you're four in? I'm four in. And how are you enjoying it so far? I kind of like it. Does is, is the first episode... You know, the pilots always it's tend to have a, a, a perspective or a shift in tone from, from that first episode to later episodes or is it all pretty consistent it's pretty it's like that is a procedural show sure you know uh so many things were in that day though. yeah i mean yeah. they get the, it within it they get into bits of mythology but it's at, at the end of the day it really is about right right yeah writing writing past wrongs to exactly. get back to t get back to the proper right. timeline or whatever right um yeah it, i i think it the concept i guess holds up the effects are dumb yeah. like that, that really bad expected. blue screen right um, or green screen. The entire so the first the pilot I told you I can't do green screen. <laughs> <laughs> we covered this last week. Go ahead. Uh, the the pilot uh, the very first episode it's a two it's a two part pilot. I think they aired them back to back, so it's basically a, almost a two hour movie. And Scott Bakula's character uh, Beckett, whatever his first name is, Sam Beckett. Samuel Sam Beckett. Beckett. There we go. Um, he Went made, on to become he made, a brewer of beer. Right? I was going to say he made the uh, and a Starfleet captain, the Ooh. baseball uh, book, the baseball card book. That yes, tells he you did. how much your cards are worth. Yep, um, Beckett's price guide. Yes, 
<laughs> um, he is like an Air Force pilot uh, breaking the speed of sound okay. um, on an experimental aircraft. And he wakes up in his underwear and no shirt, you know, just, just his underwear. Jockey? And, talking jockey? Uh, yeah, tidy whities yeah. And he Hairy spends, chest? Very hairy. He spends probably the first 40 minutes in just that. <laughs> just, like just that and I'm like I'm and when watching, Adam watched it he turned it to 80 minutes that's all I'm uh, saying so if you're interested in Bacula Sacula yeah. you're good to go yes. wow uh, I'm writing I'm, that down I'm watching it on the airplane and the whole time like it's whatever but I'm like alright I'm going to turn the brightness down on my <laughs> yeah. screen a little... I don't know why I just get in, I don't know who can see behind me sure. and stuff yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, but the yeah, Jewish guilt uh, right <laughs> It, I think it holds up, and it's kind of funny. Like the day after, or two days after, I, I started rewatching it. The AV Club, I think, did a top. They have a series called like Top Ten, and it's like the top ten episodes mm-hmm. of a show. And they covered all five seasons, um, but there were two or three in season one that I'm kind of looking really forward to, uh, hmm. to to watching. Well, I remember them doing some a bit of stunt episodes from time to time where they would actually have him flash into famous people's lives. So yep. they did a Marilyn Monroe one. Yes. They did a JFK one, which is a big deal. I don't know if they did anybody else famous, but... I remember those being big mm-hmm. deals back in the and day. And there's a bunch of racial ones yep. where, like, you know, he goes into the the um, becomes a black man, like accused of a crime. Yep. That uh, and I think at the end he doesn't know if he did it or not. Or you know, the the guy that he's um, you know possessing. Do you think it was appropriate it? that they put him in blackface for those into. episodes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was accidental blackface, so oh, it's okay because okay. he was like, "Oh, how, that? how do you accidentally it's, get it's the like, black oh face. this chocolate pie? Oh, my hands are bo- bound behind me. I guess I'll just eat it like." Like some yeah. sort of uh, so county a, fair. A cream pie, and then, then it worked out. Okay. So it wasn't racist. It was not racist. So, Jared, uh, yes. you do not remember what television program you picked. Are you going to pick pick one? I think you're right. Jason the Wheeled Warriors was probably the one I picked. So so you did not get into it. Hopefully, you'll get into I've it. I've forgotten. I need some sort of reminder. But you just got it, brother. <laughs> okay. And I did, Ro- I did Robotech, which was my favorite cartoon as a kid. And I watched... I'm probably up to about 17 episodes so far. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's three, It's essentially a three-part TV sh- series where they combine three different Japanese cartoons into one. Mm-hmm. And I feel so, like I want to switch my pick to Parker Lewis Can't Lose. I well, do switch. Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Maybe that's what, that uh, you know what? what I, I think picked. that's what you picked. Okay. Can Parker I switch Lewis. my pick, too? No, you're no. stuck. I read the lore on Cobra Commander, and I really want to go back and rewatch uh, G.I. Joe now. Wow. Yeah, I don't think those are going to hold up for you. I see those every once in a while on the hub. He has some really interesting uh, backstory. If you ever go, he's a go snake man. He's a snake. He's man, not a one. snake man. He he's was an American hmm. in Vietnam. Well, it depends if you, you're talking. Or his brother was in Vietnam. You're talking about comic book uh, lore or Wiki. TV lore. The Wikipedia lore. At any rate, Robotech, uh, <laughs> three separate Japanese animated cartoons. I am about halfway through the first and most popular segment, which would be the Macross Saga. Um, overall, it holds up pretty well. I mean, it still is an 80s cartoon, but it's interesting because this is a show where people die. They, you know, there's blood. You have people smoking in this in the 80s, which you would not see. And because it's Japanese, so, I mean, it wasn't necessarily intended for... People in Japan still smoke to this They do. Day. They still love that stuff. So, overall, I was, surpri- I, I was surprised it held up. It's, it's probably not something where I would say it's fine art. But uh, at least in terms of the spectrum of 80s cartoons, this has to be one of the top three in terms of story and animation and plot. So there you go. So we'll, uh, we'll do another check-in on our New Year's resolution once more before we get to the end of the year. Look at Adam, how handsome he looks. <laughs> uh, but uh, until then, we've got a lot of scope coming up at you uh this particular episode jared 150 Mm -hmm. i don't know if we've ever done this before we are looking back at all of the summer movies we saw in the summer of 2013 the summer we've never had a notable summer as we have this year yeah i mean we've the last few years we've seen a number of movies but this might be an all-time record for us so we're going to get into the movies we've seen uh the, mo- the ratings we've given them and maybe do some retro reviews uh just talk about our overall sense of what the summer of 2013 was for film. Indeed. So that's very exciting. We've also got coming soon another big week of pop culture comings. <laughs> no goings. No goings. And of course, we've got hit it or miss it. Mm-hmm. We'll not forget to cover this one. I think Adam gets it this week. So very, very exciting. So for all you Scope fans who want more Scope, please stick around. Keep listening to the podcast. Keep watching this video on YouTube because we've got a lot more great show. <laughs> that doesn't sound good at all. Way it? too earnest. <laughs> We've got a lot of show coming up. 
right after this. Vitamin Interactive presents Rhythms from the Crypt, the best of sudden death. Can you hear me now? What the hell did he say? Can you hear me now? Damn, it sucks to get old. Huh? Damn it. Stand back, I'm playing Pac-Man. I'll play some more Pac-Man. My own. Featuring 42 tracks on two CDs or one really big digital download, remixed, remastered, and in some cases completely re-recorded to sound as good as possible. Get down with PMS, yeah you know us. Get down with PMS, yeah you know. Pimple, pop pop goes the pimple, the pimple. Pop pop goes. My Atari, turn off all the lights and bask in the glory of a two-bit sprite. Rhythms from the Crypt: The Best of Sudden Death is available now on iTunes, Amazon, Bandcamp, The Fump, DevoSpice.com, or wherever funny music is sold. I'm bored. Everybody, we are back, episode 150. That's the scope to you and me. And to you. And to you. <laughs> hey everybody, something new coming at you. It's our look back at the summer movie film season of 2013. What did we call our little endeavor this year, Jerry? Uh was it the summer film? Blast. No, it was Autumn Film Blast. Ah. Summer, the scope summer, summer movie Slam. Slam, that's what it was. It's the Slam. We've already got something picked out for the fall. It was a winter film binge, and it was the spring film fling. <laughs> and at the end of the segment, world premiere <laughs> revealing of what we're calling our fall. <laughs> right, Jared? I guess, sure. It's going to be big. So, uh, Jared. Yes. We saw a lot of movies this year. Adam, we, we it was... Yes. Adam saw a few <laughs> with us, but most of the time it was you and me with a few special guests. I think I only saw one. We got a lot of passes. You saw, yeah, The Way, the way, the way, way Back. That was the only one. Only uh, one. You had an opportunity for another one, but you couldn't because you had to play softball or kickball or something. Well, that's not going to happen in the fall. Fantastic oh, Fiesta. Oh, we're going to... Nope. Ooh. Oh, wow. Film you Fiesta. Just, that, wow. I like, I like that one. We'll have to use that some other time. Let's pocket it, Jared. Pocket that one. Pocket it. Uh, yeah. Through the magic of social media, Jared. Yes. Passes came into our hands like... More than we could use. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Like crazy. There were some weeks we had three or four movies we could have seen. What was our? What was the most movies we saw in one week? Was it three? I think we only saw two. No, I'm th- sure we saw three in one week. Really? I'm sure mm, of it. Maybe. Sure of it. Okay. Do you think that this in- impacted you guys? Do you think... There's if you the- count paying for like Man of Steel, maybe that was the week we saw a bunch. Go ahead. There's the that notion that... When you buy something, when you spend your money on it, you have a built-in value for that product. Probably. When you guys are see- seeing this for free. Do you think that that lowered your your personal score on them? Potentially. It's a great question. I think yes. I also think the volume of films we yeah. saw this summer affected right. how we graded things yeah. over time. This is what real film critics might experience. I feel I feel like we were real film critics for this summer, Indeed. Jared. It, it, and it's very true because... When you see as many films as we did, and let's do a... Do we have some sort of drum roll, Jared, that we can uh, announce the amount of films, total films, we saw this summer? Summer is, what, May 1 to May August? through 30. August. May through May, August. May through August? Yes. The grand total, Adam, 23 films. Wow, you topped me. I only saw 20. No, there's 23 films between the two of okay. us, Jared. total. Got uh, it. Jared saw 20 films. I saw 21 films this summer. The, yep. this, this is summer. over 17 weeks ish yes. right yep. that's crazy it is crazy so I'm looking we'll, at my breakdown i saw five in may six in june five in july and four in, in august do you feel like and i could have seen more <laughs> your daughter is now at an age where you don't have to like be home all the time like she has her own life like this was a good time for it. like if this had happened five years ago could you have done it um I don't think I would have seen as many movies just because uh, a number of the movies that I saw were kids' films, mm-hmm. and sh- and Audrey has lower tolerance or had lower tolerances to films when she was younger. Yeah. But I think that the, the the general just seeing the stuff during the weekday, I don't think that would have changed okay. that much. I think Carrie would have been fine with it. So, Jared, same question to you. Same question. Your hidden children. Uh, no, they didn't. I, mind. I mean, it's about the same. Okay. I mean, like I said. <laughs> I could have seen more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like, I mean, and it was if it, I went, if I wanted to go to some solo shows that Shane couldn't have gone to, I could have seen like I could have seen Your Next. I could have seen The Conjuring. I could have gone to uh, Where the Millers, um, and that's just in the last 
in like two months here. I mean, there's. I would have gone with you. So many, so many during the fall fan plosion. Oh, I like that too. Right. Well, we'll definitely keep you in mind for now that your your evenings during the week have freed up. Yeah, you can get out there. So, uh, interesting thing. Um, oh, with, while we have the captive audience, I, I put this on a, out on a, as a call uh, maybe a month or two ago on uh, on Twitter, but uh, I might be interested in setting up some scope roving reporters who like can go see these movies when we can't. Um, so, if you're interested in that, write us an email at comments at thescopeshow.com. You have to be local to the Twin Cities area because that's the only market we cover. Um, but yeah, like I said, we get passes that we can't use or maybe only one of us is available. So, Hey, we can meet some fans or we can send some fans to free movies. The only caveat is you're going to have to review the film. So, and you can't stab us in the gut. If it's only one of us, (laughs) that would not be good. Right, right. No, no secret murders, please. So the answer, we might secretly murder you. Yeah. (laughs) So that's really the goal. I mean, we're using this as a way to complete our flesh curtains. Wow! Is, is it the are you fl- is it you, the fall flesh curtain? Are you are you officially it's, requesting uh, a flesh curtain backdrop for your for I, your camera? Yeah, you I can't do flesh curtains. Yeah, all we right? can't technology is not there yet. All right. <laughs> so we did. See, you need a lot of flesh. I'm just saying, it's a wide angle lens. Go ahead. So, um, <laughs> look, looking at our scores, Jared. Yes, we've got I have them all loaded. We've got a a wide spectrum. Mm-hmm. The highest scored film. Three and, got, and a half. Well, a couple three and a half. Actually, we do have a four star score from the summer. From the summer. Oh, well, it wasn't one that I, I saw. I don't know if we can count this. Or one not. direction doesn't count. It's my it's daughter Audrey's gave score. Despicable Me yeah. four stars. So let's let's pull the pull That's back. Because when you're she's eight, right? Yeah. When you're eight, you have two scores. You have four and zero. That's and sure, seriously, she's about like that. I think yeah. I think once she got it that you can't do that. A little bit later, she was a little bit more. Uh, uh, discerning on her her scoring but what was uh, the review that was really funny that she just yelled at you the whole time was, was it was monsters it? university <laughs> I, I don't know what it was it's a classic jared <laughs> it's a classic review but right uh for typical scope scores we've we've got a few at 3.5 a number yeah and uh what does our lowest score i'm look i see 0. 0.75 0. 0.75 yep for now a you, couple of films uh i only see one i see two really mm-hmm. what do you, what's the other one I see R.I.P.D. Oh, okay. And Now You See Me. Right, right. We gave it a half star for R.I.P.D. Oh, that's okay. You read it wrong. I got it wrong. That's the lower score of the summer. So R.I.P.D. R.I.P.D. Is, do we stand by that as being the worst movie that we saw this summer? Yes. I do. It was really, really bad. It was really bad. What was the, what, to you, what was, what was the defining element that made that movie so bad looking back at it? No. Is there a defining element? I mean, there's so many things that were wrong with yeah. it. It was just, it was a, a boring, predictable story. It was... Uh, terrible acting from Ryan Reynolds. Yep. Um, special effects were nothing were, special. Yeah, they were just your decent. Why your, did they make that movie? I don't know. That they would, spent a lot of money on yeah. that movie, and it just didn't. Yeah, I don't. You either get need it. to make it for less money, or you just need to not make it at all. It was, Is Ryan Reynolds done? No, he's not done. He's not done. He's too, he's in a lot he's of too pretty to be done movies but, yeah. that don't turn out very well. He Ryan made, Ryan Reynolds needs to pick better films. And I, th- R. I. P. He needs to be in more movies where he's just sarcastic. He needs yeah. to be in more of those National Lampoon's. Uh, I mean, I can't fault movies. him for picking Green Lantern. Yeah, I, I think maybe he was the wrong choice. I but think if the they material, were going to offer the to material him, failed him on that. Right, but I think you can't go. Oh, you sh- probably shouldn't have picked that one. Come on, who's if you given if you're given yeah. a chance to be in a Hollywood uh, superhero film, yeah. Ben Affleck, why for wouldn't you take it? Yeah, you take so, it. So. Yeah, but I, th- I think that movie. If I think the pitch is, hey, we've got something where we've we've got we've got Bridges as a Pirates of the Caribbean type guy, where you could bring something really right. weird and wacky to the character. We'll set it kind of in a superhero hero special effects type of thing, and it's sort of, and men- we'll do our own Pirates of the Caribbean. And it's sort of like Men in Black. Yep, very much like Men in Black, and that was a huge. That's been a successful yeah. series. So hey, why not take a shot at it? Just it was bad, and, <laughs> and I mean, you can't. And they screwed it up. And 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 Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds don't have the chemistry that uh, Will Smith and uh, what's his name have. Leatherface, <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. He's got a leathery face. So let's let's flip the script here. We're done talking about that one. Let's look at our highest rated movies. Yes, we've got a few of them here. Okay, let me look at my list here. We've got uh, Star Trek Into Darkness mm-hmm. at three and a half stars. Do yep. you feel like that? We'll get to we'll that. Get okay. back. We'll get we'll to get that. To We've that. got the way, way back at three and a half. Indeed. We've got the spectacular now at three and a half. Yes. We've got the world's end at three and a half. I've not seen the world's end. I have. Great uh, film. Um, all these films, Jared, mm-hmm. 
are these three and a half stars warranted? I think all but one of them are worth the three and a half stars. I agree with you. But I agree also. Now, is it all the same movie that we all agree on? <laughs> Everyone, hold up your cards. Can you see what it says on my hand? Yeah. Oh. This is where the the video exposes our faults. Yeah. We can't we can't like paint a larger canvas than uh, you know on uh, like we could in the audio. We yeah. Could Wink one things. time if it's the one starring. Ever oh, I wink Cumber- three times. Cumberbatch. Yes. Yeah. I think we all can agree that Star Trek Into Darkness probably, at least in my opinion, did not warrant a three and a half stars if you, as you look back on it. That's probably, how, no. I would Four probably stars because of that girl in her bra. Yes. <laughs> Sexy. Yeah, I'd, it, I'd probably be around three stars, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I think, that, fair. I think that, that it was an entertaining ride, but once you start thinking about it... Don't think about it. That's the problem. <laughs> the, pl- the plot breaks down it's got in some key flaws. places. Um, that being said, Spectacular Now and The Way Way Back are both s- phenomenal movies. Um, I actually uh, it, one of the things we were going to do we were going to do was talk about movies that would get higher or lower scores, kind of in its own segment. But let's do it here now. Okay, Star Trek gets a lower score. I would probably give Spectacular Now an extra quarter of a star. I think so? Because I think to me that was the best movie of the summer that I saw. Hmm. Because I felt like if you compare that to the way way back, that was a little bit more rote, a little bit more, you know, comedic in the Silly. sense. Yeah. You know, it was it, it it's had a couple di- weird tonal shifts in it that I liked, but I felt like the spectacular now was true to itself all the way through. See, and for me, I would leave it at three and a half because it didn't really have a huge emotional punch i mean it was still very very well done but i don't know i can't give it a full four stars because it doesn't it didn't like completely throw me through the ringer yeah i would i would probably bring uh the way way back down maybe a quarter star so you give that three and a quarter and then the way way back three and a half you keep it at that. yeah yeah that's what i would maybe i could do that too but i still feel like the way the way way back is slightly less good i think you need to separate them a little bit you do Mm -hmm. i agree with that um so what about uh world's end jared Yes. Is that your favorite movie of the summer? Uh, yes. Wow. I think I, think I would say that was my favorite That's movie That's a of the bold summer. statement. I think Adam. I'm going to see it tomorrow. It's it's so much fun. And I, I think it starts out starts out a little rough with some of the comedy, but it's just, you know, you forget about all that by the end. It's, I would have seen totally it, good. but Jared did not invite me. That's not true. Mm. That okay, well, true. that's how I'm going to spin it. <laughs> Adam, you've seen a lot of movies this year. I saw, yeah. Like three. Uh, yeah. Where are you? I'm right here. What's, what's, no, what's the number one you. film you saw this summer? Uh, Way, way back. Um, is I didn't see the spectacular now, okay. so and I haven't seen the world's end yet. Uh, so way way back, it's an easy choice for me. Um, there's a documentary that, depending on when you, how, you know, what you want to say is the release date, you could call it a summer movie. Uh, called How to Make Money Selling Drugs. And when did that come out? Uh, it came out here in July. It was like a can gotcha. movie, so it's one of those. I, I thought you were going to say The Art of Killing, which is a documentary I want to see. Even yes, I want to see that too. Uh, yeah. How to Make Money Selling Drugs uh, is interesting. They basically give you the step-by-step plans for if you want to make money selling drugs, here's how you do it. And they wow. talk to like you know real drug dealers, and it's pretty easy. So, <laughs> so we I'm, here, we're here, great. I'm here to announce my new podcast. <laughs> Adam sells drugs. Adam, yeah, so Adam I sells drugs. It. Adam from the scope sells drugs. Wow. Dot com. Maybe we don't. You, I don't think we want that on the network. <laughs> we might have to separate. We don't want that on the bit. network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on the scope podcast network. Yeah. Um, no, it's it, it's just it's good, and it's like it's one of those like almost Morgan Spurlocky like entertainment sure. uh, documentaries. You have a good time. Yeah. Um, any movies uh, you guys disappointed that you did not get to see this summer? Oh. Like everything that you because we've saw. seen a yeah, lot. Of movies. There's really only one on my list, and it's it fills the alien uh, Cowboys versus Aliens role, yeah. <laughs> which is the film that comes out at the end of July that we don't get to see because you go on vacation and then we just forget about it because the reviews have been sort of middling. Uh, and for me, that is the Wolverine. Yeah, hmm. we never saw the Wolverine. We didn't. Uh, we had a chance. We were in line. We're yep, deep we were in the in catacombs line. in St. Louis Park. We were 10 people away from seeing it, probably. Yeah. What about that movie that starred that kid uh, um, that was a true life story? He was in uh, Friday Night Lights. Oh, Fruitvale Station. Yeah, that's the one that yeah. I would pro- uh, th- that, that, that could have been. I could have gone to see that, but I would have gone solo and had to go to Uptown. That's an Oscar that. contender right yeah, there. So. I kind of wish I had gone. I kind of wish I had made the effort, but yeah. Oh, well. Can't see everything. You can't. Um, I really want. I mean, I again. I hope to see the uh, world's end tomorrow. And the you guys also saw it. 
the not the world's end that has almost the same name. Um, this is the end. This is the end. Mm-hmm. That's what um, we saw very early. We saw it a month or so, two months before it came out. Yeah. Um, the to-do list was the same one. And I know that you guys had a, you know, you liked it, but it wasn't the greatest thing in the world. Um, yeah, but, we give it three stars. Right. Those, those are, um, their movies are always hit with me. Yes. So uh, I, think I don't think it comes out till October on DVD. I think you'll enjoy yeah. it. So let's look at our scores, Jared. Indeed. Movies we would rate higher. Okay. What else we've covered? I have one for you that you should. We, I, I've covered Spectacular now. Um, Jared, you have not... Are any films there in our list that you would give a higher score? Well, um, I diverged on Iron Man 3 from the uh, the consensus score. I only gave it one and a half. Um, I would probably go higher. I think in retrospect and with some of the... Uh, writings about it I've read since I, I think my score would probably go up. Did I don't you guys, know that I I'd would probably c- drop my score if you. Yeah, I don't know that I would come all the way up to the three. You know, whatever you guys gave it, but um, definitely one and a half. It's probably a bit of a spiteful score. Did you guys yeah, we gave it one and a half and two and three quarters. Did you see the alternate ending no. thing storyboards no. with no. the Mandarin? Like they were going to keep him a real villain. Well, maybe that's that was all the speculation that maybe he is the real, still a real villain. That was would, my speculation. They would revisit that later. Okay. I don't think if there's anything but else like I like, would rate no, higher in there. The only thing that I have in there, Jared, is... Maybe the, Fast and Furious 6. There yeah, I'm sort of That's there. It. I probably would maybe give that a quarter star higher. Yeah. And the reason I would do you that is... You gave it a 375, so this would make it a four? Is that <laughs> we gave it a two, honestly. We gave it a two. And, he, and here's the thing, Adam. You know, you talked about you know seeing a lot of movies and not having to pay for them and having different value on it. And I, I definitely think that was an issue. But... We, of all the bad movies we saw, or all of the typically summer type fare we saw, I feel like the Fast and the Furious 6, or Fast and Furious 6, was the only one that kind of stayed true to what it was. Yeah. You know, it was unapologetic, it was ridiculously stupid, but it honored the characters and the stupidity of the plot. So. How long do you think that runway was? At the end of the movie. <laughs> I would love to see... 126 miles. Yeah, I mean, I it know. had to be that long. I mean, there's no <laughs> runway on Earth that was that long. Oh, I love that movie so much. I think if we had seen this later in the summer, we probably would have judged it higher. Yeah. And I think there's some other stuff that throughout the summer that we probably gave a little bit more of a pass to than we did for Fast and the Furious. And for whatever reason, we, we yeah. singled Fast and Furious 6 out... It's because of me. ...to be more... Maybe it was because of you. I don't know. But for whatever reason, we we're like, you know what? We really had fun, but we got to judge it as a ser- seriously as a film. Brr. Yeah. And, and we did. And we gave it two, which is, I don't think, fair. So It's a finding a balance, Adam. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. That, that, that makes me feel better. Uh, you, guys should <laughs> watch, you guys should watch five and six and seven. I, I wanted to see. Out. I wanted to catch up beforehand, but you can't. Like this, I made a complaint about this on Facebook a couple weeks back that why aren't films that are older than five years just on streaming, period? Yeah. Why are there's been so many films I've been wanting to watch. Like I wanted to watch Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz before I went and saw The World's End. Nope. Couldn't do I it. could spend three bucks to rent it from Amazon, but no, I'm not going to do that. So I just, you're making it too hard. In your Hollywood. face technology. This is to you, Hollywood. You're making it too hard on us. Seriously. What okay. about what about movies we'd rate lower? What would we rate We talked lower? about hmm. Star Trek. I have okay. a couple other li- no, movies on my list. Yep. Um, number one, I'm looking at Man of Steel. We gave it 275. Yep. I'd, pr- I'd probably drop it a little bit. I mean, the once again, they did a good job at building the world, but a lot of stupidity in the plot, which dropped me down to 275 because I think it could have gotten a higher score. Yeah. I think that it, after thinking about it, it probably could have gone even a little lower. So maybe yeah. two and a half stars. I don't disagree with you on that. Uh, the other movie I'm looking at was Elysium. 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 Means heaven. Three and a quarter. Three and a high. quarter is probably a little high. Yeah, I kind of agree with both of those two. Um, I might even look at the internship and probably go gray that a little lower too. I mean, we're two and a quarter, which is you know above average. That's and a movie I forgot that we saw. Yeah, like I just I looked and I go, oh shit, we and saw that's the part internship. Of the, and that's part of the reason I would probably grade it lower is because like at two and a quarter, you should at least remember you saw it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And, and and you have to agree, Fast and Furious Six was a better movie, probably. a better experience. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Than that. And and I know Kick Ass Two got savaged in the ratings, in the reviews, but I'm sticking by my three and yeah. a quarter. I would I, I wouldn't give it three and a quarter. I, I would be lower en- than that. I really enjoyed that movie. So, what about World War Z? We gave it two and a half. Is that are you happy with that? I think so. Okay, maybe. What about I don't you, know. I go back and forth on it. Like maybe I could drop it. It's a got little some bit. really good stuff, and it's also got some trouble. I mean, the, the third act is a problem yeah. in that film. You know, it's, I don't know. 
I don't know. Maybe we, it maybe it should be lower. We've yet to see the perfect zombie movie. Good. And maybe we, there isn't one because zombies are a dumb villain. There we go. Adam says it all. And uh, finally, let's do biggest surprise what? of the summer. The one movie that you saw that surprised you either greatly or <laughs> disappointed you hmm. greatly. Adam, do you have anything? I know you haven't seen as much as us, so. I, I feel like it was a pretty by the numbers yeah. summer. Uh, no. I'm, I'm going to look at two films. Okay. Uh, the first, another movie that I would probably rate lower is After Earth. Oh. That was surprising. <laughs> After Earth, the, no. Is it, we only gave it one and a half. After so. Earth was a movie that I thought could have been way better than what it was. And I think we probably gave it one and a half because of those aspirations that we yeah. thought might have been there. That, mov- that movie was a disappointment. And it, it sh- given the people that were involved in it, even though everyone knows I hate the Will Smith family, yeah. um, it should have been a better film. Why? It should have been better. I mean, he wrote it. Or he con- conceptualized. Yeah, I just, it just should have been a better movie. I, I don't. I don't know mm. what to say. It should it should have been a better movie. The other film that well, because they they go through this effort of building this world where yeah. humans have you know inhabited other planets and are fighting these aliens, and then you have to come back and you crash on Earth, and yeah. never even really bother with that world building anymore. It just becomes a chase film. And the nepotism and just everything done so poorly in that film. It's a shame. Uh, the other film that I would throw in there, Jared, would be Pacific Rim. Mm. Uh, Pacific Rim is a movie that I think could have been a a nirvana for geeks. And some would say it is. And those people are wrong. So here's the thing. This is, I have not seen it. I feel like this has a chance to be a more extreme version of our Fast and Furious argument. <laughs> okay. So when I see this movie, we'll take we a look at it. We disagree on it. We, yeah. We'll bring it do back. You like, do you like uh, movie making cliches and shortcuts? The movie shortcuts? I love that movie. No, no, no. Not the movie <laughs> shortcuts. Talk about uh, visual shorthand, character shorthand, things to to try to get you to... to Characters that are there to fill a specific purpose. I don't know what any of those Dialogue mean, that is cliched. I like stuff blowing up. Okay, you'll like the... Blo- yeah. I like the blowing up stuff parts too, yeah, but sure. it's everything in between that's bad. Do you Sorry, like stupid nerds. things like you know, you, world governments create giant kick-ass robots... And then decide that those robots aren't going to work, so then they're just going to build seawalls around around the entire continental existence to stop monsters instead. Do you like plots like that? Because that's what happens in this movie. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds okay, I guess. <laughs> All right. It's stupid. Well, like, thank you. The Republicans were in power, and then the Democrats were in power, so they had different ideas. I guess so. Sounds fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to get the debate on this film, if there needs to be one. I think for me, I guess, I, if I had to pick one that I was surprised by was probably White House Down. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. We gave it one oh, star sure. because yeah. it was just a mess. I thought it was going to be by the numbers that yeah. the summer Tatum action one? film, yes. but it was just it it took too many wrong turns for me. So I Foxy really like, Baroxy stars I like in Channing it. Tatum. I want I want him to be yep. funny. And it failed at the box office, so America yeah. saw what we saw. It's a shame. It yeah. Finally, America agrees with Indeed. us. I agree with you. That one is that one could have been. A entertaining diehard romp. Sure. And that movie was disappointing because it started off in that vein. Like, Absolutely. okay, we've got, we're setting it up. We're, we're balancing the absurdity with with an uh, interesting story. And then it just goes and off the rails. we lose the balance. Yeah. Then they're doing donuts in the White House gardens and done. Game over, baby. Here you Game go. over. So there we go. Tidy. Tidy. Can we do a 2015 uh, quick preview? Dude, there's so many movies. <laughs> what's <on>. what's <laughs> your Ben? A- we haven't talked about our Ben Affleck uh, as Batman thoughts. Any <sighs> any thoughts? Don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, I have. I don't. I have no problem. Have with any it. problem? With I it. don't really. I don't care. Michael Keaton was Batman, yeah, so yeah, I don't no. understand why people are and so people upset. Hold, people hold him up as like people didn't think Michael Keaton would make a good Batman, but look what he did. He was great. And guess what? Mm, yeah. What? I don't know. Those films aren't that great. Yeah. No. If you look back at them, but still, I mean. I, I think it's interesting people are using Michael Keaton as an argument in support of Ben Affleck, yeah. but then if you really think about it and you really analyze it, it's like, maybe this is not in support of Ben Affleck. We just I don't got know. Adam yawning on camera. Yeah. Got the first one. Here's the, and here's the I thing. I think Affleck's a better choice than Keaton, honestly. A lot of those people yeah. complaining about uh, or t- using Keaton as the standard probably were, were born in 1990 <laughs> when the movie was yeah. you know, a wee... Yeah. Drop and they I don't mean, remember. No. Buster Keaton was dead for a long time before he was cast in that movie. Right. Ugh. Right. Eek. The great silent film star, Buster Keaton. What's your favorite Buster Keaton film? The train one? The general? The general? Yeah. 
It's a good one. Too many to count. It's, it's classic. Too many to I had to watch say. it last year for my uh, uh, cinema class. Mm. I took a, yeah, I had a silent film class. Mm. It's good stuff. It's good. I like Buster Keaton more than... Uh, Michael Keaton? Name? No. The uh, Charlie Chaplin guy. Yeah. Alex P. Keaton? Moving on. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Ah, way to wrap it up. There we go. We're doing a great job killing these Star Wars, will it be out in May or December 2015? Adam. Oh, is, is that a debate right now? Uh, yes. Potential. So they're not doing the film all of them at the same time thing that they did no. for all these other movies. No. Then I would guess May, right? Is there already a... Uh, is they, haven't, a they haven't even started principal photography yet. I mean, is there is there a weekend in May available? Like, uh, are those all claimed? I don't think it matters. If Star Wars wants it, it's, it's going to happen. Up. I would, Disney's also releasing Avengers 2 that yes. year. Superman, Batman film. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot the going on. The next Percy there. Jackson film I hear is coming out in 2015. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, the, <laughs> people will move out of the way. The seas will part. Harry Potter reboot coming out in 2015. Mm-hmm. And Fast and Furious 18. <laughs> that's, all, that's coming out next year, I think, isn't it? Seven? Isn't that next year? Seven is next year, yeah. They, they can just enough. churn that shit out. Good. They churn it, baby. It's like mm-hmm. butter. Mm-hmm. It's uh, like... If you compare The Expendables, which is a piece of <laughs> shit franchise, Uh-oh. with Fast Here we go, Harris. Adam's Expendables rant. Wow. Haven't we heard this enough times? Uh, it's <laughs> camera off, and all he does is go off on Expendables. Wow. No, Gibson should, would never even be considered for Fast and Furious. Never, because they couldn't afford him. That, that movie makes a lot of money. They do. Well, this is great. Spinning our wheels here. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's wrap this up. We've got coming soon. Coming soon to you. There's Adam. Look at him. Take a break. We'll be back in a minute. We now join the school already in progress. Under the the, the, the scope. It's that part of the show where we interrupt Adam's NFL magazine reading time. (laughs) He's still reading it a week later? He's still reading it. Wow. He's in depth, Jared. He Mm -hmm. he memorizes every word. I'm on page 74. Wore the same shirt, too. Yes, coming soon. And <laughs> <laughs> you promised these jokes would be done by the second episode. It I just waited for the coming soon that I trigger it. That's what I do. I like it. Adam, please, coming All soon. All right, we've got a lot of music coming yes, out. Yes, we do. Some of it's actually going to be okay. There's a lot of bad music, too, though. Uh, okay. Arctic Monkeys. Have yeah. a new album I've been hearing out. some tracks off that album. Sounds good so some far. Cuts, some deep some, cuts. Some deep I cuts. Get, I get Arctic Monkeys, Kaiser Chiefs, uh, uh, Franz Ferdinand. I kind of get them all confused sometimes. They're not the same music, but no. I just kind of, in my mind, get them confused. So, it's uh, dementia. But the... <laughs> Kaiser Chiefs' new album just came out. Oh, did it? A couple weeks ago. Oh, I got to listen to that. From today. And uh, it's good. I like the Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah, yeah they're a bit, a bit of a mixed bag for yeah, me. Yeah, the stuff of theirs that I like, I really like. Mm-hmm. But the stuff I don't like, it's kind of like the scope. I really hate it. Bitches. Uh, DeLorean has an album. They're named after that car. Yes, they yeah. are. Earth, Wind, and Fire have an album. One of your favorites. Called Now, Then, and Forever. I feel like the names of their albums have to like somehow have three things three, also. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, George Jones. He's uh, related oh, wow. to... Uh, a lot of old timers. George Jetson. Yep. Gloria Stefan. Now, usually when they're related, they have the same last name. That's where Not the same. we live on, in Asia <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Goldfrap has an album coming out. I like them. I don't know if you guys... It's my are favorite flavor of coffee. Yep. Mm. The Goldfrap. Uh, mm. Your other favorite uh, flavor of coffee, Man Man. <laughs> I I love <laughs> Man Man Coffee. The latest single from that band, Man 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 Man. I've never heard it. Shane just wants a little half and half in his. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Knopfler <laughs> has an album coming out. Yep, Dire Straits. Yep. Uh, so I didn't know. I read. Oh, the, I thought he was like a guard for the Packers. Sorry, it sounds like it. Yeah. I didn't know that when they say faggot on that one uh, song that everyone gets upset about that they're like actually like saying you, you know sh- what shouldn't do that. Guess what? Huh. Now you just got us flagged for hate speech on YouTube. Oh really? Good job. Good job. Is that a thing? I, it is a thing. I don't know that they'll catch that word and go, hey, it's very... I was talking I think about, somebody has to report it. I, uh, <laughs> I was using it in... What's it called? Context. Uh, di- uh, yeah. Context no. is key. What's the thing where you can like review stuff? Uh, fair use. Fair use. Sure. Fair use of that word. Hmm, interesting. So anyway, yeah. Like, I, didn't know that. I thought that they were using it in a bad way. Uh, I should have said the F word. Like, I should have said... Because anyway. that's not confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Ministry has a new album coming out. So if you're into industrial music still. Jared is. Nope. Uh, minus the bear. Uh, we're 19- get that bear back. I mean, the group isn't complete without the bear. Honestly. <laughs> we want to have plus the bear. Oh, goodness. Uh, the 1975. I like that band. 
I don't like the name. It's a little little. Is it so? Like there's a few years ago, there was a band called the 1990s. So it's the same band. And there's the, the earlier sound. And, yeah. Or, yeah. Don't, I don't like the name, but I like uh, a few of the tracks that I've heard from them. Over the, they've actually been pretty prominent on uh, Sirius lately. So. Um, Mr. Satellite. Radio. I know. I know. Oh. You know how like. Why don't you just do a commercial for him right now? Yeah, please do actually. You, you, so, you, still, get, you still get that free? Or do you re No, I re upped. Oh, oh. Big spender. $35 for six oh. months is not bad. Last w- last weekend was a free preview weekend. Oh. Well, they la-dee-da. don't they don't play Stern. Like they no, like, you gotta, I don't get that. You gotta pay yeah. for that. I mean, even the free previews, they, it's weird. Uh, anyway, the weekend has no one coming out. This is don't get confused. This is there's no E in the end part of weekend. So if there's another band called Weekend with it yeah. spelled fully, it's the weekend's been getting local play here. This is my this is my problem with band names, and it's much like sports teams' names. If you're gonna have the, you better have a plural coming after it. You're not the weekend. You're gonna be the weekends. Fine, good with that. The weekend, don't like it. He doesn't like, like it. It's Why? like calling your team the Blaze, the Blazes. Or the wild, the wild. I don't like he it. He hates it. I don't like it. I think with the weekend, like that is a, it's a plural. Yeah, but as a band, plural, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. It's a little too, a little too trying to take it to the edge. Okay, and so, <laughs> <laughs> get big problems, Darren. You For, got big problems. You're, run, you're running east west. You should be going north south. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just creating <laughs> controversy. I'm creating Thank controversy, you, Mr. Berman. <laughs> creating controversy where there is none. And just for the sake of the YouTube audience. Just like always, I don't know where the name of the uh, uh, band starts on this one and where the, uh, the album name starts. So I'm going to say the band name is Trombone Shorty. Sounds good. And the <laughs> album's name is Say That to Say This. I like, can, do you like that name, Trombone Shorty? Is that what it Did I get it right? Yeah. Uh, excellent. Trombone Jake's Shorty. computer band or whatever? Hey, real, real quick, just a curious question here. When you uh, copy and paste this list into the email... Mm-hmm. How, what what are you sourcing from? Because I'm curious where these formatting issues are coming in. Like, what do you use to compose your list? Uh, I use pull Microsoft, back the curtain Microsoft Word. Word. No, and then I get what website, and then I pull it from Metacritic, which usually puts it in to a table when you cut and paste, and then mm-hmm. I just uh, just use text only. Mm-hmm. That's how I do it. Mm-hmm. Well, there's your problem. Okay. So there's a lack of visual separation. We've got some oh, movies Jesus, coming guys. out. Do I would yourself, like for you then. to compose a HTML page. Got a style sheet going. Make, I don't sure wanna, make sure it's responsive. I don't want to do that. <laughs> the responsive um, part, yes, but nothing else. All right. So we know Jared's going to hate the name of one of these movies. Mm, can't okay. wait. It's not movies. It's bands. Ma- movies can the be f- named. No. The Family. Oh, fuck. So that. it should be The Family. We've got passes for that, Jim. Yeah. We have to talk about we're gonna, whether we're going to see Is that Medea's well, The say. Family? No, it's De Niro. Oh. Uh, Insidious Chapter 2. I don't know. No. I could have so, got passes for that, too. Horror movie. Yeah, DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, Star Trek, the aforementioned Star Trek Into Darkness. Jared will not be getting this oh, on Blu-ray. Good for you. Yeah, that was some bullshit. Yeah, me either. Did I just get flagged? Did I flag us again? Well, you can swear all you want. Oh, okay. You just can't. You just can't. You can can't we show, hate. No, can hate we show fish. titties and stuff also? No, Damn. no, no. That'll get you shut down. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> hate speech? Fine. Boobs? No. No. No hate speech. Fired. You shouldn't get flagged for hate. Oh, okay. No nudity though. They'll shut you down. Uh, the Big Bang Theory season six and Castle season five. Uh, video games. We're getting yeah. into that time of sports. So we got NHL 14 demo of that dropped on uh, Xbox. It dropped, Jared. And Killzone Mercenary for the Vita. So Curious okay. question now. Yes. Now, the Madden series, they've just gone to numbers, right? Like Madden 25 they or They just did that this year. They did that because it's 25th why? anniversary. Oh. That's why. That's it's why not, they did it. Okay. I thought they just it wanted it. to just obfuscate what year it's Now, for. what will they no. do next year? I say they call it the Madden. Yeah. Mm. Singular. Okay. It's like a reboot. Just to mess with me, I guess. No, not. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Maddens. <laughs> the Madden. I hadn't thought about that. Yes. So guess what, guys? It's what? that time for Hit It or Miss It. Sounder. Special effects. Shit. Tony Partington. It's that, t- <laughs> it's that time when uh, one of your scope hosts will pick something from uh, the upcoming week in pop culture to either check out or to avoid altogether. It's Adam's week. Adam, what do you got? All right. Uh, I'm going to do our, f- I think this is our first Miss It. Yes. Picking yeah. To, to Inaugural Miss It. What are you picking to miss? And I'm picking Sheryl Crow's new album. You said there's a Whoa. lot of old ones Ooh. on here, and so I'm going with Sheryl Crow. You hater. Now, there's this kind of running joke on the internet, maybe, that all Sheryl Crow album Can titles, you narrow it down? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Theinternet.com. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that all Sheryl Crow song titles and album names um, are just weird ways of saying anal sex. Mm, so, really? I've let, never heard of this before. Let, Tuesday Night Music Club. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> Leaving Las Vegas? 
I guess. Go ahead. I, I don't know. <laughs> What's wow. the title of this one? Feels Like Home. Oh, that one definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we finally got a hit. That's the one that... Uh, uh, no, this is a miss. Oh. No, I'm saying that's a I hit. A hit on the joke, miss on the album. Yes. Don't see it. Don't, so don't avoid listen to Cheryl Crow says the scope. Yeah. Or else. That's what... Uh, what's the cyclist's name? Lance Armstrong. Greg Lamont. Greg Lamont, yes. That's what Greg Lamont <laughs> said. <laughs> I'm going to write... I just... Uh, Greg Lamont needs to get into this some way. Uh, don't forget Bacula Sacula. Sacula. <laughs> I got Bacula Sacula. Right. Underlined. So there you go, guys. Coming soon. It's over. I say it's <laughs> over. You're killing under, 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 under the scope. Guess what, Jared? I was waiting for you to say under the scope is over. Go ahead. We got comments. You're going to read them. Do it. I'm going to scroll down here. These are comments from episode 147. What was that about? Was what like was a, our topic? Uh, that was part one of our... Uh, we talked about Luke Ski a little bit in the uh, comments because John Dorton was questioning it and we also talked uh, it was a part one of our interview with thomas the ghost hunter what are we doing shaking it up yeah i'm giving <laughs> a little energy uh loose. Luke, Luke Ski writes in and says hi the way i see it i'm not in any way legitimately famous i'm just a big fish in a specific small pond i agree sorry wait yes just kidding then he goes on to praise me a bunch for all the music i helped him thank you luke I was, it was a pleasure yes uh, and then he says thanks for all the support of the years without with or without air quotes i think we did something with air quotes Luke's a good guy. Yeah. Luke, you can always call in. You know the voicemail. Line. He does. We have it reserved. It's always open for you. We call it the Luke Ski line, really, at this point. <laughs> uh, so as we, I mentioned, we were talking about ghosts in the yes. episode 147. So Michael writes in and says, I'm a little bummed to have never experienced a ball manipulating ghost. Hmm. I think you take that however you want. One time when How I do you was... tie that in with Bacula Sacula? <laughs> <laughs> when I was like 12 or 13 one night, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I think I had one of those happen to me. My, oh my. Uh, Mad Mike writes in, as a ghost hunter myself, (laughs) (laughs) as a ghost hunter myself, I can offer some possible answers to a few questions. Yes, please. Why are ghosts only at night? They're not. Why? We would be there all the time. Why do you hunt at night? Because of the sun. Ever try to protect an image, uh, project an image onto a wall in the middle of the bright sunny day? You can't see Jack, Shane. Mad Mike knows. You can't. The point of going on a ghost hunt is to try to see them. In the middle of the day, the sun is likely to wash away anything you might see, so ghost hunts happen at night. Makes sense, right? It does make Couldn't sense. Couldn't you do it in a darkened room, maybe? Don't know. Yeah, just get, get some of those uh, light-dampening shades. Yeah, some block, blockout curtain. Blockers. Blue blockers. Mad Mike. What do you think about that? Mad Mike, we've got answers <laughs> for all your ghost hunting questions. You know, it's also good for recording sound, this nighttime thing. People tend to shut up at night, so all the sounds around us all the time are reduced, allowing for more quiet and being able to pick up smaller sounds. See, now hey, that... Your name is Adam. That is Remember an answer I can get night. behind. I think just generally in the city, yeah. people are going to bed, TVs are off, people aren't driving as much. Less of a din? Less hustle and bustle. A din. There is some possibility the sun affects ghosts the same way uh, it does shortwave radio transmissions, or even in some other way. Unspecified here. Thanks, Mad Mike. You left that one open. Yeah, scientist. <laughs> Come on, <Or> scientist. <laughs> Mr. Venkman. <laughs> Or not, who knows, definitely not enough data to really tell. We'll get some data. Uh, that's a call. The scope's calling you out, Mad Mike. Get some data. Come on, Mad no, no. Mike. Thanks for writing in. I uh, yeah. appreciate the insight. So obviously you've you've done some research or you've participated in these hunts, so good job. Well, you say you are a ghost hunter, so... Why doesn't he write it and give us a ghost hunting story? There you go. Challenge. Challenge. Accepted, Mad Mike. Tell you've us. accepted it. Tell us, uh, uh, don't just uh, give us your facts and figures. My new favorite thing is when Jared stares at the camera. <laughs> You're very earnest about it. I really like it. <laughs> you do it. I pretend like it's not there. So I'm addressing Mad so, Mike directly. I look so tan, Jared. Yeah. I mean, I am the I tannest am fella. We'll have I'm to work on lighting. Is still a, it's a work in progress. Ooh. Work in progress. You look like Snooky. Jer- Jersey Shore Shane. Over I look like Snooki. Um, Call you Jersey Shane. So, Jersey Shane, I love it. <laughs> have, do you guys have a, uh, an uncomfortable feeling about about that episode or any of the responses to it? What do you mean uncomfortable? Feeling? Like, I I don't I'm not I don't want to like call anyone out or say anything like ghosts aren't real. Um, but it, it just seemed I don't know. It seemed weird to me that uh, like the like that response specifically was like. Like, go- <laughs> I don't. I have no idea what you're getting. I'm at. saying that ghosts aren't real. That's fine. Okay. Right. 
so you're saying that we've gotten some positive reinforcement that ghosts are potentially real, and you're yeah. a little disturbed by it. Yeah. See, look at that. My, I, I, my, I, look what I, I did. Thank look you. what I Thank did. You for I verified. interpreted Adam's remarks, and I put them into plain English that even, I guess even what a I'm hamster trying to say could understand. I don't feel comfortable. I'm telling you, my wife has had a ghostly experience, which I believe when she told me. All she right. believed the story she told me. I'm not even saying I believe ghosts, but I'm saying you just had why, would she, why would she be telling me a story like this? That Because she believes it's real. Okay. That's fine. Well, I'm not trying to fight with you. I'm just saying. You're an like, asshole. Wow. <laughs> I was going to put hate speech All the favors I just did too. for you, Adam. <laughs> <sighs> Mad Mike, I'm with you. Yeah. If you have What's some hate speech you want to say. Adam is against you. The sun does it? What do you say? <laughs> He's saying it's hard to see images that you're trying to project yeah. in with the sun. Okay. The sun could also interfere with shortwave radio and ghost stuff. Right, but shortwave radio is, is a real thing. Okay. Hey, I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to read comments. <laughs> you sound a bit like right. Duck Dynasty there. Here to hey. Read comments. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I don't watch the show. I don't know. Anyway, hey, uh, if you have... <laughs> Stop it. Ooh, it's so sunny in here. <laughs> if you have uh, some ghost stories you want to share with us, you, you can write in at commentsofthescopeshow.com. Call the voicemail line, 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. If you are a ghost and you have a cell phone, please yeah. call that phone number. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, look, Checking the white balance? What are oh, we doing? Oh, there. It, it fixed it. Okay. We'll work on it. It did. Look at it. You can also uh, like our Facebook page, join our Facebook group, follow us on Twitter, mm -hmm. follow us on Tumblr, or check out the brand new YouTube channel. You can see how orange Shane actually is. Yeah. YouTube.com yeah. slash The Scope Show. All of it. Or go to thescopeshow.com and click on the links in the sidebar. Back to me. Back to you, Shane. I'm going to announce right now world premiere exclusive, The Scope Ghost Hunting Ghost Trip. Oh. Led, led by Adam. Adam's going to take you around to all of the local haunts. Wait I can't minute. wait. And then hit you in the head with the bat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, so you, ghosts are not real as he pummels your brains. You're burying the lead. You did have an exclusive that you forgot a, to premiere. A scope exclusive? What? The name of the fall thing. Name of the fall thing, Jared. Name of the fall <laughs> film <laughs> review series. The, the, we have discussed it. We put it to committee. I bet everyone's really happy they stuck through all that. Bullshit. I sent it to Steve Carell and he okayed it. It's the Scope Fall Film Flam. Scope Fall Film Flam. You're getting rid of the autumn. I like autumn, but that's okay. okay. Fall Auto Film Flam is better. The fall yeah, it's harder to say. It's harder, harder to say. Out. The Scope uh, Fall Film Flam. I thought. Fall film did you flam. just come up with that? Fall, no, fall we got it on the last <laughs> fall you film. Were, you were talking fall so slow. I just I really want, fall I, Film Flam. You, I you have to talk. You have to enunciate. You I didn't to, want to fall over it. Fall film. I didn't flam. want to trip over it. The film flam. All right. Play on words, Adam. Are you guys going to get as many invites as you did over the summer? Well, that? we've already gotten like four <laughs> for movies that we neither, we don't really want to see. We could have seen the One Direction film, although that was August. Really, we've only got one so far for September. No, we'll see. There's another one. There was another horror movie that we, I keep getting stuff for the the one Adam read on the list. Hmm. Start, Part two. Chapter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Insidious. Insidious yeah, yeah, I don't we've, care about that. We've been hitting. Getting that we can't one. see everything, guys. Come no. on. Yeah, guys. I mean, we, we've got some good fall movies coming out. So besides Riddick, we've got uh, we've got that uh, Gravity movie that's going to be a Gravity. fall. So we've, we've got, got uh, Don 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 John. Don John. Yeah, I want to see that one. We've got uh, the the uh, Somali pirate movie with Tom mm. Hanks. There's a lot of stuff coming out in early fall. So it's not a wasteland, like some people no. think. It's spread out. And yeah. these are all Oscar type films. Adam, very exciting. All right. Very exciting. How do I segue to the end of the show? You can say, that? let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Wrap it up. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Episode 151 coming. One week. We'll see you then. Later. Ciao, ciao. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. Days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing... 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying, Hey, though, tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope. Scope.